In this short example, I'm going to explain how to model uh, gas condensate PVT using ASHA semi-dynamics software. Uh, there are cases in oil and gas world and both reservoir engineering and production engineering that we cannot use common correlation that has been used the last three decades for modeling the PVT for different reservoirs and we have to do equation of states modeling and one of those cases is gas condensates that we have to run equation of states and common correlations are not really applicable for these cases so before we go and explain how to model gas condensate PVT in ASHA software Let's explain why it's important to consider phase change and in gas condensate reservoirs. So in gas condensate reservoirs, as we approach from the far field to the sand phase of the producer, we drop in the pressure as like we have for other uh, reservoirs. But the importance here is as we drop the pressure from the reservoir pressure to the dew point, and then lower, we got three zones in gas condensate reservoirs. In gas zone, which happens at the pressure above the dew point to the reservoir pressure that normally happens, uh, normally is above a dew point, we have a zone that only gas is moving, and we call it one phase zone. As we hit the dew point, the condensates start building up here and they call it condensate banking, this condensate buildup at this zone. By creation of the condensate banking, we have a saturation is build up, but because the saturation is below the residual saturation of the condensate, the condensate is not mobile, but the mobility of the gas zone is dropping. As we go from this zone, which the saturation of the condensate goes above the residual saturation. We come to the zone that we call it mobile uh, two-phase zone. In two-phase zone, we have both gas and condensate moving. And the gas mobility is dropping as we approach here and then it starts building up. And condensate mobility is increasing and it's a start dropping as uh, a dropout start lowering up. Um, so this change of happening from the dew point to this point is highly correlated to drop out of the condensate and so that's really important to understand this, to model this properly and incorporate it in reservoir simulation and wellbore simulation because the same phenomena are going to happen inside the vertical section as the pressure is dropping as we go towards the wellhead. So in this case we have uh, two different gas compositions we want to understand and we, model, we are going to model it in the ASHA software. As you see the composition is presented here but as you see in the bar chart the C2 to C6 are pretty consistent between these two the important is between the C1 portion and the C7 plus portion. So as in gas 1, we have less C1, we have the same amount of C7 plus build up um, in the gas 2. And we're going to understand why is this difference is, creates a really different modeling uh, aspects in the phase change and the drop out and totally reservoir simulation aspects. So we come to the phase envelope of this gas one and gas two. And gas one, because it has the higher C1 portion, it's at lower temperatures as start boiling or bubble point and dew point. So this is a critical point of this gas one, and this is a critical point of gas two. If you have a reservoir at the 70 Celsius uh, temperature, and we drop in the pressure as we get closer to the wellhead. For gas one, we are going to hit the dew point. 
and the same temperature we're going to hit the bubble point uh, the gas too and this created a huge difference in liquid dropout uh, diagram so for gas one which has a high gas, uh, gas component and we hit the dew point as you hit the dew point at this point you start bailing over gas condensate and we go lower it down but for this one we are in the liquid phase because we hit the bubble point and we start flashing our bubble um, liquids as we hit the, the bubble point. So this is a small portion in this gas one and gas two create the shale oil or volatile oil as gas two and gas condensate that's what's common as a shale gas, which um, the gas which you create the gas condensate banking and close the well board. So really important to understand equation states. It can be the totally different reservoirs. It can be different modeling aspects we have to consider. So it creates a huge complexity. And because it's really composition dependent, we can use the correlation that's common in the oil and gas and we have to do equation of state modeling. So now let's see how we can model um, equation of states modeling in uh, actual software for gas condensate reservoirs. So first of all, we have to create the model. Uh, so for gas and black oil, we have to go to the isothermal models. So we come over here. We choose a node up for this case. You can use any other options. Then we go on the fluid options. So we have water and gas here. For water, it's just based on correlations. So the only thing you can consider is the salinity. But let's come to the gas and apply gas composition here. So in gas composition, uh, in the gas section uh, fluid, we have dry gas and gas condensate. For dry gas, because it's not really composition dependent, it's based on the correlations that been over around in the oil and gas for the last two decades, three decades, and are just based on the gas gravity and the portion of the nitrogen, CO2, and H2S. So for example, if you have the gas uh, specific gap the 0.8 and 5% nitrogen and 1% CO2 and 0 H2S uh, or the other way of putting it is you put nitrogen and put different things different compositions here if you have a composition but most of cases you don't and you just use the gas composition here then it's automatically calculate the amount of um, viscosity and the BG or volume fraction of the gas. So it, these are really simple um, based on gas composition uh, or based, based on a specific gravity. But here we want to model the gas composition uh, based on gas condensate and that's really important. So let's put, first of all, we have to put the gas composition. So I put one to one for nitrogen. 1.94 and uh, there is no H2S in this one uh, 6599 8.69 591 512 um, in this model that the, the company didn't provide us is that isotherm uh, normal butane so we put everything in normal and uh, normal propane and um, normal pentane And so now we put 659. So now we got the gas composition by putting the head uh, OK and start calculation of the phase envelope. Uh, and the software use the default options that you have here. But as you know, uh, we don't have a temperature at 80. So for this case, we have to come for reservoir model. And in reservoir model, we can change this 80 Celsius to 70. And then we go back to gas because in the gas reservoirs, there's no purpose of just doing the PVT. It's the purpose is to do the whole modeling. And one of the first things that you put the input is your reservoir model. So now we have a 70 here. And now we want to see how the software is handled. The, uh, 
which phase envelope doesn't change. So in this case, it provides a high rate uh, based on different models that we have, but that's not the option for us. So if you want to get rid of it, we can click right on it and we go on the chart setting and we deactivate, uh, nav um, deactivate uh, the high rate. So we don't want to see that. So this is the dew point and this is a bar point and this is the reservoir condition that we see here. And we come, we come over here and see the dropout and IFD change. So, the important, as what is said previously, the important uh, factor is the amount of C7 plus in most gases in the gas condensate. But the problem with the C7 plus is there are, we go based on characterization and we don't know what's really the components of these C7s are. So there are different models available um, to characterize eccentric factors and PCTC. And these are based on the boiling point and specific gravity. And there's a special example for um, once we have a, a lab data and we want to calibrate the lab data with the model that we're going to explain in the future. So now we see how that behave in this gas compensate for gas one. And we want to do gas two is simply we come over here and we change the property to the gas two properties. And the only thing you have to put is just type in uh, the values. And The software take care of uh, uh, the modeling for you. So now we hit OK, and we want to see it at 70, and you're going to see what's going to be changing. And we already seen it in the slides, but as you see here, you hit the bubble point. And the same thing is automatically show the the hydrates for you. Now we want to see how we can consider the effects of the capillary pressure on this because that's really important in shale gas aspects. Uh, we got nano Darcy's uh, permeability and that's effect the phase change. The effect of um, the capillary pressure on the dew point is minimal. It mostly has effect on the bubble point. So to understand the effect of the bubble point here, um, by looking at the face uh, envelope, it's, uh, it's not possible to see it. You have to follow this uh, pressure, which is 16,367 kPa. So now by clicking this, we see what's the uh, new bubble point at this point is. So we have to let the software run uh, everything. And once you have the capillary pressure, it takes a bit longer. So now we see from 16,367, we have 100 kPa less at the bubble point because of the capillary pressure. You see how simple it is to um, model uh, equation of states um, in actual software using the gas composition. And, and there is another example that we're going to explain um, how to calibrate the, the lab data, uh, the equation of states to the lab data. Uh, and that one we're going to explain um, how to do the pan on SRK, what the differences are, and how to consider the characterization on the C7 plus using the different models, and what's the capability of different models are, and pros and cons, and everything. But here we just explain the phase envelope um, and we also show how to liquid dropouts and IFD changing. And in the future, once uh, the example that is prepared for the lab data, uh, we show how to see the effects on RSRV, BO, and BG, and density and viscosity, and how to calibrate different aspects. At last, we just want to go through. The overview of the future version and the future version we will have the vertical section um, combined with the horizontal section in the solvent we will have the, the vertical section on the gas reservoirs and also the long-term decline on the gas hopefully we will have the stagnant fills building version 5 
as well. On the experimental side, we would have the CFD modeling and network modeling for the rel perm. So uh, at the end, I just want to thank everyone who listened to this uh, example.